Everybody's cashing in. Oh, boy, you look natty tonight. You like that? I like that. Dressed for action, aren't yeah. we, guys? <laughs> you can probably get those spots off of there with a little remover. It'll be all right. <laughs> As you know, around the country, I guess in many... This is election day, is it not? Local mm -hmm. sure. elections? Yes. In Los Angeles, I'll be honest with you, we have probably some of the silliest propositions on the ballot I have ever seen. Only in Southern California. For example, Proposition 21 makes it illegal in the city of Beverly Hills to dress a rooster in a members-only jacket. <laughs> uh, proposition G would... <laughs> Makes it a misdemeanor to do a flash dance in a Christian science reading room. Uh, are you a, are you familiar with Proposition X Y? No. It would make it illegal to have a salad bar in a mortuary. <laughs> I know. I agree. I voted against that. Uh, Proposition 41 is very popular and I think is going to pass. It makes it legal to shoot the person in front of you at the supermarket line if they're paying by check. <laughs> oh, what's happening today? The, uh, the president and the first lady, I guess, with about 150 secret service men. Did you read that? Or yeah. off on a trip to Japan. And uh, Reagan's plan, as I understand it, to uh, visit Japanese cities destroyed by the Americans. And then to reciprocate, uh, the Japanese leaders plan to visit Detroit. <laughs> I'm sure you must have read this in the paper, saw it on television. Uh, the president and the Secret Service had all their socks inspected <laughs> for holes. Because, as you know, it is... Uh, in Japan, the culture says, the protocol is, you remove the custom, you remove your shoes before entering Japanese homes. And they actually wanted the Secret Service and everybody to have no holes in their socks. Uh, not only that, but I understand the president's Gucci loafers uh, were fitted with designer odor eaters. <laughs> uh, the, the president knew that it is the custom to uh, remove one's shoes in Japan, so before he left, he asked uh, for a pair of loafers, and they sent him in two congressmen. <laughs> That's too easy, wasn't it? Yeah, we'd, we do an easy joke occasionally. Before leaving for Japan, would you believe that Nancy set up all night donning Ronnie socks? And if you believe that, you believe that I will be a contestant on the newlywed game. <laughs> oh, me. I'm just enjoying that one myself. <laughs> Speaking of the Reagans, did you see it? The, the, the Speaker of the House, Tip O'Neill, um, apologized to Nancy Reagan, although he did not apologize to the President. I'll tell you what he did. He sent a letter to Nancy Reagan because uh, Tip O'Neill had made some remarks about the First Lady in the New York Times. And, for example, I think he said that if Ronald Reagan would quit tomorrow, Nancy would be Queen of Beverly Hills. <laughs> And that's a terrible thing to say about Nancy, because Queen of Beverly Hills, that's a demotion. <laughs> and that's not a joke, is it? <laughs> but did you read what he said about the president? And he did not apologize. He said that the president only works three and a half hours a day. According to Tip O'Neill, he said it's sinful that he's president. And Reagan said he would answer that first thing tomorrow at 11 in the morning. <laughs> As you probably know, if you read the papers here, Friday, we had a lot of aerial spraying for the, uh, Mexican. the Mexican fruit fly. And today, apparently, the fruit flies are fine, but all the parakeets are dead. <laughs> <laughs> Did you, uh, you notice by the papers that the Soviet leader, Yuri Andropov, failed to show up at the uh, Revolution Day parade in Red Square? There have been rumors for months that he is very, very ill. And the official word given out by the leaders of the Kremlin was, Mr. Andropov is, quote, out with a cold. Of course, the Kremlin is still saying that Khrushchev isn't dead, that he's on 
He's on leave because of hemorrhoids. Uh, poor Yasser Arafat is not having a good, uh, a good couple of days here. He is uh, surrounded by artillery and apparently is running for his life. Now, I don't know Mr. Arafat, but it seems to me when you're under heavy artillery fire, you don't wear a checkered flag on your head. <laughs> I mean, if you're going to start the Indianapolis 500, that's great. You know, yeah. <laughs> Here's the weird news item of the day, and so help me, it is true. You're all familiar with the fast food franchises all over the country, right? There may be soon, well, in fact, I guess they're started already, the first franchise chain of funeral homes. <laughs> it was in the paper today. They're trying to lower the cost of funerals, and they're going to have... Franchise funeral. They're being criticized already. They're calling them McDonald's of mortuaries. <laughs> it's, a, it's a different kind of a funeral home. It's called Stiff in the Box. <laughs> and you, you drive up and you mourn into the plastic widow's face. It's so weird. I understand they bury your loved one in, in, in a McCoffin. It's a six-foot styrofoam box with a tuck-in flap. In it. And I understand they may have John Hausman doing... <laughs> doing the commercials. Uh, Hausman is going to say, We dispose of your loved ones the old-fashioned way. We... We double bag them and put them on the curb. <laughs> anyway, I don't know if it works. <laughs> anyway, all oh, good. You're, you're in a good mood tonight. We uh, have a fascinating show. We have Miss Barbara Walters with us tonight. We should be here to talk to you. I've been wanting to interview Barbara for a long time. After watching her interview all the people, I've got some interesting questions for Barbara. And, <laughs> and one of the brightest talents in our business, Mr. David Steinberg, is here. And, and the band has had a medley uh, for some time. About they, six weeks. Bit, <laughs> they've had it for a good six weeks. And uh, it's, I think, ready to go tonight, right? Well, we're thinking about it. Well, as a matter of fact, we came in Saturday, especially, and rehearsed it. Well, then what you're saying is you'd like to get it on tonight. And in more ways than one. <laughs> what the hey? <laughs> okay, we're going to get it in tonight. If, of course, we have. <laughs> Come on! Okay, let's, uh... I know what was going on here. Stay where you are. We'll be back. <laughs> you ought to be... Super audience tonight. Great audience. What, is, what was this called when you used to do that with the sticks? Pick up sticks. Pick, was that it? Yeah. Okay. They had oh, fancy yeah. names later on when they tried to make it into a Did more glamorous Did you when you were a kid? Certainly. Okay. What do you have there? I have uh, it's some new old business. All right? The Tonight Show would like to congratulate our affiliate. It's good with drumming. Don't do that. Go ahead. Oh, excuse me. A little rhythm. Go ahead. The Tonight Show would like to congratulate our affiliate in Columbia, South Carolina, WIS-TV, on the occasion of their 30th anniversary. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. WIS-TV. You know, I was looking at the... Um, we get a report every uh, month on the show, the letters we get for uh, fan mail ideas, suggestions, mm -hmm. guests, etc., whom people like, whom they don't like, favorable, unfavorable. And there's a category that says band music. Really? Yes. And it said for, and it said against not allowing the band to play. Oh. There were some people who 
upset with you. Well, upset with me. How right. many people wrote in to want to hear us? Well, how many guys are in the band? <laughs> I recognize some of the handwriting. Yeah. But we have no. He's got a great. Not your fault. We should your get it in gets... tonight. Maybe. Tonight. No, no, we're gonna get it in. <laughs> Listen, Sean, I want wild. to show you a picture. I think I've seen this before. Do you remember ever seeing a picture of Horace Greeley? All right. Somebody's think there's a resemblance to me. And Harry of our makeup department got me a wig. I'm going to show you an actual picture. A wig. It's not a wig. It's a beard, isn't it? I don't know whether you can see that closely. Now, look at that. Is there any resemblance at all? Yes. Now, that is a picture of... Try the beard. Try the... I'll hold the picture. I'll hold the picture and you try the beard. Now, right? maybe with the... Not much of a beard, but I guess that's what he had. I think I have it on backwards. Yeah. Nothing? Doesn't do it, huh? Okay. Maybe you need the hat. Listen, he was the famous uh, journalist, reformer, I guess, who said, Go west, go west young, young man. man. Go, west. go west. I've been mistaken for him before. Really? When? I said, Go west, young woman. <laughs> go west. Out to the Pacific Coast yes. Highway, hang a right. <laughs> right up to Malibu, and it's my house is one of the big vibrating chimney. <laughs> I didn't say that. No. <laughs> Yesterday, somebody sent me this from the Toronto Star. Police seek slap happy man from Canada. All right, maybe you've, maybe you've run into this. Maybe you've run into this man. A uh, Halton police are trying to get to the bottom of the case of a man who wears purple leotards and has been asking teenage girls in Oakville to spank him as part of a bogus initiation rite. <laughs> police say the man, described in his early 20s, medium height, clean shaven and shy, poses a pledge to a fraternity rite. And he says he stops young girls and asks them to... Sp and the girls, I guess, you know, yeah. <laughs> he bends over and they give him a couple of whaps on the bun. <laughs> Do you believe that? <laughs> Remember when I asked the band one night, uh, and I said, Doc is doing a gig, or the musicians are doing a gig someplace? Yeah. And I asked, did you guys know where that came from? No. Nobody knew. Well, somebody sent me a letter. Uh, Mary Voland, uh, from the Pomona Public Library in Pomona, California. Do you happen to know where it comes from? No. It's from G-I-G-U-E. How would you pronounce it? Gigue? Gigue. A lively dance form of Italian origin. And then U.B. The Blake... Uh, says it's been in, uh, Yubi, who used to be on the show, who just passed away at the age of 100 last year, said that it was wild, widely in use since 1920. Though it should be noted for the non-jazz job, the term is applied only to a non-jazzman. For the jazzman, the non-jazz non is a, is a haim or a day gig. Does that mean anything to you? Just means, just what? means we're not going to play the number tonight. <laughs> Man is something about that number. Anyway, apparently it's some derivation or modernization of gigue or something like that. Gig. And it got shortened to gig. All right. What else do we have here? I'm writing to you on... I'm writing to you in high hopes that maybe you can help me out. Terry... Can't the last name. Terry Van Ryan. And he says, for months I have been trying to obtain a photo of Pia Zadora. I'm a big time fan of hers and would really enjoy the photo. Would it be possible for you to let me know whom I can contact <laughs> in order to get a photo of Pia Zadora? Let me check. Let's see, I got a Zadora, Zadora. Betty Furness, uh, <laughs> photo of Ty Cobb sliding in a second. <laughs> no peers. Who put these pictures That's in? That's quite there? an improvement of the little black book. The Isn't pictures, it right? Oh. Jack Grant, our prop <laughs> man, did this. I can't even show you the pictures. <laughs> Here's an article that quotes a man named Jack Casey, who is with the National Marine Fishery Service, on what to do to avoid sharks. Do you have any idea what you do to no, avoid I do sharks? No, do not go in the water. Well, outside of that, stay in the cocktail lounge. 
that's the way you solve all of your problems. <laughs> that's the way you avoid autumn. <laughs> You're taking your car to work. You avoid that by staying in the cocktail lounge. No. Don't swim at night when you're unable to see an approaching shark. I mean, that would help you what? if you could see an approaching shark. That would be of some help. Of course, <laughs> right. Why he take a fly? Say, oh, look a shark! <laughs> you beat a man swimming in a wetsuit or a surfboard is not good because that looks like a seal to a shark. Well, how do they know that? How do they know? Do they go to a shark and say, see that man on that surfboard? What's he look like? A seal. How do they know he looks like a seal? That I don't understand at all. Don't attack, don't attach dead fish to your belt. Well, I knew that was a problem. Okay. <laughs> you don't think a spider's too hooky, do you? No. no. <laughs> All right. Now, you, you know about you know about chain letters, don't you? Right. Yeah. Don't get taken in by chain letters. They've been going since I guess man could first write, and they go around all the time. Usually it's you're gonna get a lot of money, and if you break the chain, it's always General So and so Terrible died curse, in the Philippines, yeah. he broke the chain or his leg <laughs> fell off or something. It's the same stuff. Anyway, here's one I have not seen before. Kiss someone you love when you get this letter and make magic. This paper has been sent to you for good luck. The original copies in New England. It's always somewhere. You've been around the world nine times. This luck has been sent to you. You receive good luck within four days of receiving this letter, provided you kiss someone and send it back out. At the bottom it says, Dale and Fairchild, not believing, threw the letter away. Nine days later, he died. So, I guess... You've got to kiss somebody, uh, or you die. Okay, folks. <laughs> kiss just for the hell of it, because you don't want to be have bad luck, right? No. Kiss the person next to you. <laughs> go ahead. Come on. Why not? Nobody's got any guts here. I think I have to go do a commercial. You, <laughs> you want to die? You want to have what happened to Dalen Fairchild? Oh, no, no. Not at all. No. <laughs> Wonder if it works if you just hold hands. <laughs> anyway, if, you, if you get a chain letter, if you get a chain letter, first of all, it's illegal. Right. I think all over the United States, the postal authorities, don't fall for it. No. Because if there is any money involved, only the people who start the letter end up with anything. It's like right. the pyramid clubs of a few years ago. Mm. And by the time the letter goes through about 15 or 20 hands, I think you have about 3 billion people involved in it in right. the world. And so, it, it never works. Already? Anyway, we will be back. Barbara Walters is here tonight. Uh, David Steinberg and the orchestra hopes they're going to get the number in. <laughs> so, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Hello there. Okay. My first guest I've known for a number of years, you all know her, I'm so sure there's nobody in this country who does not know Barbara Walters. She'd been called, and I, I'm going to ask her if she likes this appellation. Is that what they call it? W.C. Fields says that appellation? Called the High Priestess of the Celebrity Interview. And she's consist consistently listed as one of the most influential women in the country. Would you welcome, please, Miss Barbara Walters. Each other, so we're okay. That's right. That's you won't right. die. Did you ever get a chain letter? Yes. Did you ever believe in them at all? Yes. Well, come, are you superstitious? Yes. <laughs> Do you find me a wonderful guest? So? I've seen. I should, I should learn. You never ask a question that could be answered yes or no. I just should say, how do you feel about chain letters? Now you have to respond. I have to tell everybody though for why I am here. Okay. Okay. I am here because I have been for what, eight years asking Johnny Carson if he would do an interview. And for eight years, he very sweetly calls me up and says no. True. This year, he said yes, we did it uh, two days ago. That's true. And this is my punishment. I That's true. <laughs> I have the feeling that every question, right. every, every question that I ask is going to come back. 
And okay. also I have learned something that I don't know whether everybody knows, but I will tell you all. He has great legs. <laughs> Yeah, it's nice. <laughs> Didn't know you felt that way. What was the question I asked? I asked you about chain letters? You, you know what the first question she asked me on this interview was? We're sitting there and I said, you know, don't get into two things that are too personal. And she used to start off and saying, what was your first sexual experience? Now, was that a joke or? I started to answer it. I thought. I wanted to be a good interview. You really did. I wanted to loosen him up. So, listen I, him up. That, yes. so I said, what was your first sexual experience? And he's, he started to tell me. He said, you want to hear her name? <laughs> the day he was 17. St and I kept saying, I was kidding. He said, well, and let me tell you. And then we, I kept, Johnny, I was kidding. I was kidding. He is such a blabbermouth. You yeah, know what oh, we yes. hear about cool, aloof? <laughs> I tell you, the personal stuff. Well, I, we had to edit the whole thing. Nobody really wants to hear all this. You, do, you do a good interview. You, do, you, you put people at ease, and sometimes that's... Uh, that's kind of an edge you have because you get comfortable with somebody and all of a sudden you start to tell them things that you might not you it's might not wonderful say wonderful interview that we did with you it really well, is I, I don't know because i'm, I'm serious I, promise you. I i was uh, you don't remember what you said after it's over and since it is filmed i, I don't know how it's going to show and I also hope... because you when you're funny you're very comfortable when you open up and you begin to talk about some things about yourself then you begin to think and we all do did i say that what did i say yeah. i shouldn't have said that I, but it's a lovely interview right. and it will be on in in, in december on an, another Another network. Yes. Do you remember your first sexual experience? <laughs> no, you know. I knew it. You know that I wouldn't be that tacky to ask you to... It is next Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. We're going to take a break. We're going to come back here and we'll talk about a lot of things. <laughs> Something fell over on the bandstand. You, uh, I mentioned the introduction. You've been called one of the most influential women of our times, and that's probably true because you can, you can shape people's perceptions of things that are happening in the world by the way you interview people and also of other people. Uh, how do you feel about it? Do you... I don't think you ever think... I mean, I read all the time that, that you are considered so powerful. Now, you see how you're turning it around right away? <laughs> oh, Notice the I'm sneaky just... way the way she does it. And I'm much more comfortable that way. I mean, it was funny. Didn't you feel funny the other day when I was interviewing yes, you? Yes, I really did. A little bit when I you really used did. to kind of being in control. Mm -hmm. You know. Anyway, what was the question well, I asked you? What was the question you asked? About <laughs> being influential. Do you ever think of that when you're out there? The 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 impact that you you could have on. You know, when I used to think about it, except you don't get yourself that that carried away. In the in this the times when I would be interviewing Sadat and Begin and Arafat, mm -hmm. in the course of maybe two days you would you would interview the three of them and you I used to think why couldn't all the three of them get together and talk because one would give you a message to give the other one and, the, and you'd right. think you know when all of a sudden done you're a reporter you're really not a, a statesman and yet in that sense look at the power we have because I can talk to these people who won't talk to each other right. when you were talking in, earlier tonight when you came out about Arafat so on, and I remembered the first time that I met him and what he was like and 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 each time you talk to one of them, you really do feel, f you're almost convinced by that argument until you then talk to the next one. Well, all of and those people sense. have a great deal of uh, personable, I hate that word charisma, but charm, do they not, in situations well, like that? They're, they're used to, to dealing and with And they people. learned over the years. It was fascinating because they all learned how to deal with television. I mean, they practically would pick up the telephone and call you. I think that almost happens too, too much now. I mean, there are some who, no matter what, you can't seem to get... I, have people tried to call you and say they want you? Uh, yeah, but they're usually them. the ones who call you are the ones you don't want. Right. I mean, I, I consider myself a great pen pal with Andropov. I write to Andropov every month. I we thought it was just a little... Pens. You're kidding. No, he never writes back, but that, I mean... <laughs> you wanna, you wanna do you do that? write letters? Yeah. Oh, sure, because you keep hoping that he will do the interview. You write to him and you write to... I shouldn't give it all away because as I'm doing... Well, what difference is it? Why don't you tell him you're 12 years old and you go to school in the Midwest? Exactly. You, might, you might get an answer. Yeah. Every time there is a, a crisis <coughs> in, the, in Central America, I try to get through to Fidel Castro. So you did interview You interviewed I have interviewed mm -hmm. And I get... This is true. I get a Christmas card every year from Fidel Castro. It comes in March. 
<laughs> it really does. I don't know whether it means that it's, it has to go by way of, uh, I don't know, what, Grenada or, or the post it's, but I get a, he's, he's the only head of state outside of the President of the United right. States who sends, what, 40,000? I get something like that. From. You get a card from the Reagans, right? I get That's a card good. from the Reagans. Yeah. yeah. Don't you get a card from the Reagans? Yes. yes. Do you get a card from the Reagans? you all get a card from the Reagans? Put you on the list? Yeah. Are you... And it's nice. It's impressive yeah. when you get it. Are you a competitive person? Yes, I think so. Is it important to you to be, say, number one in what you do? And not as much as it used to be. I mean, I, I, I would, if somebody gets the interview before me and I didn't try, I'll be mad at myself. I think, why didn't I? Why didn't I make that one more phone call? But I don't have the same passion or the same ambition that I had. Really, in, in the earlier days mm -hmm. when I, you know, when I, we were both working in New York, I, I have said, I don't want to climb any more mountains. Uh, it's time now to kind of enjoy it a little bit. Sitting in your house the other day with that water that I, I you just feel that that wave is, well, it, it, it is right next to the house. You just think well, Last winter it was in the house. <laughs> It was a friend last winter, yeah. <laughs> but then I thought, how nice. You know, when we were sitting outside afterwards and, and just being able to sit and talk, how nice to have, a, to have a little time to do this. I don't have enough of it. Yeah. You know, you, you don't have enough well, of it. What would you do if you, if you didn't do what you do? You ever thought I of saying, all right, I've had enough of this, I think I'll just uh, be Barbara Walters, uh, citizen of the world, or whatever. Would that make you happy? To do nothing at all? Well, when I was a little girl. I wanted to be. My father was in show business, and I thought yes, it would be terrific to be a tap dancer. I could, you know, I, I, excuse me. That's right. You want to keep, I'm a keep the image. You can't do that if you write letters to drop off and say, hello, you're a tap dancer. <laughs> doesn't work if you know you're a tap dancer. knowledge will be on the telephone in about two minutes saying, you know. You were, you were in the press an awful lot when you uh, were undergoing those contract talks and so forth, and there's always that business about women in journalism trying to... Uh, reach the same status as men, which you have done, but you're one of the few who's, who's done it. Do you think it's getting better oh, for... Oh, more and more. I mean, there are some really wonderful <coughs> women now on television. Uh, there are some wonderful women now doing everything. I wish that there were more... Let me see. Do I see women behind the camera? As I look here, I see no women. My producer, Beth Polson, is terrific, and she's a she woman. Is. Freddie, I... We have... Uh, I see no women we, in the band. We have no women engineers. Women. Where? We're worried about. There's one. Uh, <laughs> does that count at all? Does that count? <laughs> if you want him to be, he'll be. But it's, it's, if it's not necessary, no. Uh, no, it's getting better. That, that, that's for sure. Uh, on television. But it's slow. Those things happen slow. But television is no different. I mean, we all think that television is... is we, we make it a separate place from the rest of the world. You know, when there was the whole suit by Christina Kraft about women being too old, and she was only 37. I found that very depressing. But, you know, in any industry, and, and in motion pictures, as a woman gets older, it gets more difficult. And it's also true with men. I mean, there are men as they get older in television who, uh, you know, get... get <laughs> Let's, let's, let's explain that a little bit. Get shut when they get into their late 50s, and early 60s. And Have you always been a cruel person? <laughs> when did this streak of cruelty hit upon you? What did we keep saying to him when we did the interview? We kept saying to Johnny and then embarrassed him, so I'll only do it once. We kept saying, he's so cute, and he was so yeah, adorable. Oh, we kept saying, you're so cute, and he got very kind of... <clears throat> well, I mean, you know, cute. cute? Gary Coleman's cute, you know. <laughs> not, not as yeah. different way, different uh, way. Cutie, it's time for a commercial. What is it? <laughs> You'll be sorry. You better I sit down in the chair. You're actually standing. <laughs> Us older folk, you know, have to take it easy. We have to take a break already. Yeah. The time just flies, doesn't it? Okay, we'll take a break. We'll be back. Of course we will. <laughs> Yes, as they say, a man of many talents. And let's hope he displays some of them out here tonight. <laughs> no, he's a comedian, an actor, and director. Obviously, he's not going to act or could uh, direct for you tonight. But he'll be performing Saturday night in San Diego, the Old Globe, the Old Globe Theater. <laughs> Formerly the Old Globe. In medieval times, it was considered the Old Globe Theater. <laughs> he's going to be there as part of the San Diego Comedy Festival. Why not? 
And he's directed a new movie that's just come out all around the country. Is that grammatically correct? That's just come out all around the country? Yes. Seems very wordy, it's doesn't it? Released? Just been released around the country. Shorter words would be nicer. <laughs> if I just said it and brought him out, it would be helpful. Too. <laughs> would you welcome David Steinberg? Or you can be interviewed tonight in either direction. Oh, this no. is great. I mean, I, I, did you discuss your first sexual experience? Or I, 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 I started to say, I started to tell her. Tell me. No, I'm not going to tell you. It was a disaster, like most of them are. Oh, yeah. Mine too. Because I grew up in, in, in a very uh, conservative Midwestern background, and I uh, was not as far advanced as the kids are nowadays. You think they're better now? Well, I think they should certainly uh, have sexual experiences earlier in life, apparently. I'm not sure that that's good either. No. How about you? Same, conservative, you know. Yeah. yeah. I, all I remember was her saying, you finished? <laughs> <laughs> but, uh... I found it mine then. <laughs> but I, I don't remember any more than that. All right. What do you want to talk about first? You had a movie? You want to talk about yes, going, going berserk? berserk? John Candy is in it. And Joe Fl all the SETV guys. Joe yeah. Flaherty, Gene Levy. I think it's very funny and it should be around the country. Around the country. Universal has released it in a sort of whispering campaign. <laughs> <laughs> you have to ask your neighbor, did you ever hear Going Berserk? Is it out? <laughs> yes, it's been out for a few weeks. So but you're trying to get, as they say, the word of mouth. Just yeah, it's, I think it's quite funny. And you're directing this, right? Yeah. yeah. Good for you, all right. You, we talked about once, about going back. You've been married about 10 years? Actually, 11 years. It's good memory. And this is our anniversary this weekend. You're kidding. Yes. What is the... Uh... People always applaud. Yes, well, <laughs> people always applaud that. It's like well, when they used to go on quiz shows. I have 19 children. Hey! <laughs> Big so, deal. I, I think they just applaud each What is the 11th? Uh, well, uh, the 11th is about three or four more than you've had, isn't it? That's true. Yes. <laughs> this isn't your night. No, it's really not. <laughs> no, I, no, no, I don't know what the I mean, 11th is. What is the 11th, Barbara? You know, is there paper, a glass, tissue paper? Uh, tissue paper. Tissue like paper? Ah, Good. Be a nice gift. Paper, isn't it? But in, in Hollywood, as you know, this is a tradition. 11 years is uh, legendary That's in our true. business. We're very happy, Judy and I. And yeah. You talked about the first time that you introduced her to your, oh, yes. your family once, which was not a joyous occasion, if I remember. Well, only because I am... Well, she is Italian. And my family are Russian Orthodox, Jewish Canadians. <laughs> Sounds like a good match. And, and as, I don't know if you remember, but I told you that Gentiles, to my father, were people, although intelligent, <laughs> they sell their children for whiskey. <laughs> yes, I... So, when you bring home an Italian girl to my family, I mean, it's, it's uphill. I mean, you, right. you don't actually bring a Gentile home to my family, you bring a cute girl home first. <laughs> Just to soften them up. Let them get ready for it. And, see, my, my father... My father embraced his prejudices. He was cute about his prejudices. Really? Yeah. Well, he would stand in the grocery store Christmas day and he'd wait for the first fleck of snow to wend its lazy way down to earth. And as it would touch ground, he'd go, ah, they got their snow again for Christmas. <laughs> they meaning the, the, the Gentile community, thing. yeah. <laughs> then on the other side of the family, we have the Italians, my in-laws. And the Italians, for a living, um, in my family, buy restaurants and set fire to them. <laughs> That's your father's perspective of that. That's right. <clears throat> so you try and start a marriage and all of this, it ain't easy, yeah. but this is easy for us. We, we've, we've enjoyed it. So this is and it's simmered down, huh? 11 years. Oh, yeah, within a year. My wife is a favorite in the family now. Yeah. How does he feel about that, your father, about that beautiful little baby girl out there that's half <laughs> Sasha. Sasha. Sasha, she's the best, isn't she? She's so smart. My writer. She's nine months old. <laughs> Good beauty. Show business to the hilt, aren't Yes. You? Oh, yes. Now, what do you want to talk about? What's going on politically? Got any comments on what's been happening? Yes, some of the news it, is kind of stark, and it's not, you can't... Well, some of it is interesting. I like the, uh, Grenada is interesting to me. Not, what, what's interesting is the labeling of it. The, the president got very nervous about calling this an invasion, and he wanted to call it a rescue mission. So they were going back and forth between Casper Weinberg, is it an invasion? Is it a rescue mission? Is it a breath mint? Is it a candy mint? <laughs> 
<laughs> so I'd say, why don't you have it, like two mints in one, make you, make it a rescue invasion. Rescue invasion. <laughs> now, I happen to have been in Grenada. Really? I was in Grenada. Yeah, I, we, we talked about it. I didn't mention this place. Remember I was on a yacht? Yeah, in the Caribbean. In the Caribbean. Right. And I was there, and when I was there, I remember this island. This island was, there was a little, it was a sleepy island with a holiday inn. And I, to me, when I heard of this invasion in Grenada, I, I just, it's not an invasion when the Marines land between the the ice bucket at the Holiday Inn and the bongo bar at the Club Med. It's hard for me to get excited about this great victory right. having been there. So that, so the labels interest me. Now you've got uh, William Clark replaces James Watt. Right. Now we won't even talk about William Clark in the old days not knowing where Zimbabwe was. I don't either, but I, I'm not running for office. Now, what's interesting is in the old days, when you would have an appointee from the president, they would say, he's a graduate, let's say Eisenhower administration, they say he's a graduate of Amherst and the Kennedy administration, a graduate of Harvard. Reagan, when he announced Clark, he looked the media straight in the eye and said he's proud to say that William Clark is a third generation rancher. <laughs> and the media picked up on this as if it was a credit. <laughs> so I'm thinking, what is a third generation rancher? It's a guy who shovels manure. <laughs> so, to me, in Washington, they're all third generation ranchers. <laughs> to bring it right down to Absolutely. little analogies. Already? My, it is time for a commercial again, but we will, we'll be back. <laughs> All right, we're talking with David Feinberg, Barbara Walters. We do, I believe, what did you say, Ben? We have a clip, but I don't think there's time for the number. Not time for the band number tonight. Uh, 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 How about... Tomorrow, guys? No, tomorrow's a bad day, Johnny. We're very full tomorrow. Full we tomorrow. Got... So, this could be real trouble if we don't get this in soon. <laughs> you uh, gotta be kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, they give us one note. No. Uh, but one note. No, no, you take the whole shooting man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No more of this one note stuff. <laughs> <laughs> We, uh, we do have a, a film clip of about a minute of going berserk, uh, which, uh, <laughs> which is, was filmed earlier today at the band rehearsal. Uh, does this need any setup? Uh, uh, probably. I, I don't know what it would well, we be. Then. No, it, it's what, the fat scene. Oh, yes. Well, it's John Candy, and it, out of context, it's just, why don't we look? Okay, silliness. What? Here it is. John Candy very berserk. funny in this. John Candy. <laughs> You're fat. <laughs> My husband was fat. He's dead now. <laughs> you must eat like a pig. <laughs> yeah. Cigarettes will kill you. <laughs> My husband smoked, you know. He died from smoking too much. I thought you said he died because he was fat. He was fat with bad luck. <laughs> <laughs> These guys are very funny in this movie. I, you yeah. know, people get I a hope chance to be to good it. for you. Thank you. There are a lot of talented people on Second City. Oh, yes. This, yeah. And this group especially is just wonderful. They really you do. are in this film? No, I, no, he's I, director. He is the director. Yeah. I, thought, I wondered. I thought this is the first person I've met with no ego. You didn't show yourself. You directed it. Yes, yes. that's right. That's right. right. <laughs> Megaphone and puttees and all of that oh, type yes. of stuff. Um, we just don't have any time left, do we? Hardly. You can go out playing with the band. If you do no, the doc is not going to play any of that. Please. Yeah. Please, doc. Please. I don't suppose you're going to play the closing theme tonight either, are you? <laughs>
Maybe if Doc doesn't play, I was play, thinking can... about it. Why don't we take... We have to take yes, a break? I Why don't we have Doc tell us about his first sexual experience? We'll, go... <laughs> we'll, get, we'll get to that also. <laughs> we'll be right back.
Chào các mọi người Và hôm nay bên em lại về một chiếc Kia Morning Chiếc xe này sản xuất 2009 Bản 1.0 số sàn Phiên bản màu bạc Kia Morning là một trong những dòng xe phân khúc hạng A Rất là tiết kiệm nhiên liệu Bền bỉ Con này thì đi cũng nói chung là cũng nhiều năm rồi Thì đương nhiên là cũng Và chạm bùng Toàn túi khí này. Đấy là bình thường mọi người nhé bên em chưa vào các dòng xe nỗi vì vậy là sẽ có một mức giá rất là rẻ cho mọi người chốt tuy nhiên là trước khi báo giá thì em phải quay tổng thể các bạn có thể thấy rằng con này tay nắm cửa vẫn mạng cờ rôm lốp la răng thì các bạn nhìn thấy vẫn còn đi dài dài đấy đèn hậu thì nói chung là phân khúc hạng A ít tiền thì nói chung là đèn nó chỉ có vậy thôi nói chung rất là xấu nhưng mà nói chung là cũng và tạo chấp nhận được mua về tập lái đưa con đi học đa số tập lái rồi đi gần quanh quanh nhà số sàn rất là tiết kiệm nhiên liệu đấy mọi người nhé đấy nói chung mọi chức năng của em nó thì bình thường tuy nhiên là uh, nó từng va chạm mà nói chung va quẹt rất là nhiều rồi thế thôi nội thất bên trong thì các bạn có thể thấy rằng là uh, vô lăng đã được bọc cần số thì còn tương đối phanh đạch cơ ra ghế mũi còn cũng còn tương đối đấy mọi thứ của em nó chứ là còn còn được Đó. nói chung hơn những con con các bạn đi thuê những con đồng nát đúng không những con ở những con này đi còn vẫn được bạn có thể thấy rằng hàng ghế sau còn khá là ok trần thì đã trần rồi nhé Đấy, mọi thứ của em nó thì nói chung là đầy đủ chức năng cho một chiếc xe để các bạn tập lái đưa con đi học an toàn <cười> Đấy. thân gần mưa rất là chất đấy. <cười> đấy nhưng mà các bạn cứ phanh nói chung là phanh nhìn khá là chất đấy chứ con này đèn cũng còn tương đối sáng Đấy, đã dán uh, phí đường bộ tự động Nhìn nó cũng rất là ok ấy chứ Đâu phải uh, Đầu nát qua đâu Đấy mọi người nhá Chúng ta tiền ít thì chúng ta mua con này Đấy. Rất là rẻ Đấy, em cứ quay qua tổng thể cho mọi người xem Bên em không nhận cọc trước Các bạn cứ đến trực tiếp xem xe Đi thở, xem máy móc, xem mọi thứ Được thì mới bắt đầu Chúng ta sang tiền làm thủ tục Có thể đặt cọc cũng được Nhưng mà không cần phải cọc trước Cứ đến trực tiếp xem xe Bên em không nhận cọc trước, cọc qua mạng nha Cứ đến trực tiếp xem xe Đi thở Rồi Chán chê thôi Sau đó thì nếu một chốt thì mới chúng ta mới bắt đầu làm thủ tục sang tên Chúng ta không vội vàng làm cái gì Bây giờ thì cứ gần Tết Thời gian rất là nhiều Cứ thoải mái đi nhé Đấy, và với một chiếc xe mà Đời 2009 thì Số sàn mà lại còn bị Và quẹt rất là nhiều thì Đã được giao bán một mức giá là 59 triệu Đấy Các bạn mua về tập lái con này hơn 50 triệu thì các bạn biết rồi về tập lái đưa đón con đi học mọi thứ ok chức năng ok hết nhé Đấy, các bạn cứ thuê thợ thể đến trách thoải mái nhưng em nghĩ là với mức giá này thì là chúng ta phải phải chấp nhận là xe nó hơi lỗi một chút Đấy. đấy là cái điều đương nhiên các bạn mà mua thì chủ động liên hệ sớm với em còn bên em bán hàng còn xe nỗi giá rẻ rất là chạy con này mà đúng xe ngon thì chắc chắn phải trên 100 tầm trăm rưỡi ai mua lại sớm với em xin chào
Thank you.